Hi, welcome to the Catriani Yvonne Show, and today's guest is the distinguished Dr. Myra Brown Green, author of the new bestseller, Brooklyn on My Mind, which features 129 and 29 of black artists yes. that are featured in this wonderful book. So we're going to talk about the book and how you came about coming up with this idea. I know it's like a launch um, for you to do a documentary. Yes. So thank you for having me, first of all. Thank you for coming. I had the opportunity of meeting her at a book signing, and she's been promoting the book for the past couple um, of months. Yeah, it's only and, a few months. Um, so I got to meet her in person to get my book signed. So it's a new project for me. Um, I think it was like three artists um, that was also at the book signing. So now my new um, hobby is going to be to meet <laughs> all the ones that are still living okay. and get them to sign my book. Good. So I have some more work to do. Yes. So tell us about your journey. Uh, well, just tell us about yourself, first of all, for the people who don't know you. Well, um, I'm originally from Massachusetts. Born and raised in Cambridge. Well, I was born in Boston. Okay. And I was raised in Cambridge, Massachusetts, went to high school. I actually went to um, one of the oldest progressive high schools in the country, if it was still existing, mm -hmm. called Cambridge Pilot School. And I, almost, I only mention that is because it th needs that's, to be mentioned. <laughs> that's the school that the mayor went to. Mm -hmm. So we went to the same high school. Okay. In Cambridge. So I grew up there. Um, I started out at Boston University, and I always wanted to be in the fashion industry all my career. And um, one of my friends said, have you heard of Pratt Institute? And I'm like, no. She said, well, it's in Brooklyn. And I had gone to Brooklyn one time. <laughs> and I said, OK. Back then, though, the, we didn't have the internet where you could just go online. You had to call and get an application, exactly. and they sent it via snail mail. And they sent me the application. I filled it out, um, did a portfolio, didn't really know what one was, mm -hmm. and I got an interview, and they accepted me. And I graduated. My first school, I graduated from Pratt Institute. Wow. See? Mm -hmm. That's um, how I got to New York. <laughs> <laughs> and we were just talking, and discovered that we both worked at Lloyd & Taylor, so we have like lots of stuff mm -hmm. to talk about after the show. Because um, Lloyd & Taylor was actually, um, I went to the high school of fashion industry, oh, so okay. I spent a lot of time in that part of um, the business before moving on to other things later in life. Mm -hmm. And so, that's interesting. I'm telling you, yeah. you never know. <laughs> it's, it's a small world. Yep. So, so then you moved to, so you went to Pratt. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So how was that experience? Because it's a lot of different artists, famous, um, older artists, master artists, that I guess like around the early 60s would come here and they had like a Yeah, they, there were um, um, Jacob Lawrence and um, a number of other artists mm -hmm. who definitely lived in the area mm -hmm. as well, like um, Ernie Critchlow mm -hmm. and um, the first black woman, um, I believe, was Vivian Schuyler Key, who's in the book mm -hmm. as well. She went to Pratt Institute. She graduated. Mm -hmm. I think she was the first black to graduate. Um, if not the first black, the first black woman mm -hmm. um, to graduate from Pratt Institute. And um, I had a ball. <laughs> I really did. Uh -huh. I, um, <laughs> I remember coming on um, campus the first day to move in. Mm -hmm. And they were like welcoming the new students. And they had the last poet's music blasting. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my god. They're allowing, you know, music where they're cursing. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, this is so cool. But anyway, um, I had a really good time. I was very active with the Black Student Union. I really didn't, and I was having this conversation with someone recently, I didn't really learn about black artists per mm -hmm. se, um, probably until after I graduated, and I don't know if it had anything to do with me, I'm not gonna, mm -hmm. um, but I, 
I know I didn't really care for art history, mm -hmm. um, although I ended up with a PhD in art history later on. Mm -hmm. And I realized, you know, because I teach art history as well at one of the local universities, and you know, I realized it's what you give the student. But I will say, um, I did work a lot of um, part-time jobs while I was at Pratt to help make money for myself. Mm -hmm. And um, so one tell of us, yeah, well, so tell us some of the jobs you had. Oh my had God! So I worked in I worked um, in in a lot of the um, school programs. Okay. So I worked in the art department. Um, I worked in the art history department. I worked for A and S. I think that's what it was Asian called at the time. Yes. I Before was. Before became Macy's. Then I was, um, I, I've modeled for Fashion Fair Cosmetics at a and mm -hmm. and, um, and I would, you know, I would do this transformation. They would, um, if I had any exams to take, they would give them to me early because they knew I was, I would just work wh mm -hmm. wherever I could. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, I didn't live, I wasn't from New York. Right. So I would go and I'd take the test in the, um, in the chair's office. And then I go off to my job. They do my eyebrows when I got there. <laughs> you know, always had thick eyebrows. They do my eyebrows, make up my face, and then I just be out there on the floor. Um, where else did I? I mean, I oh, I did so many things. But one of the things that, when I was in the art history department, the director was cleaning out his office, and he gave me this case of old. Um, slides that he had mm -hmm. and he said one day you're gonna use these wow. and I'm like really and I kept them I mean I still have them to this day um, I graduated from Pratt in 79 I believe yes in 1979 and they were of African um, African masks and sculpture and that sort of thing and my first lecture that I did with those particular slides was at Pratt Institute. I went back. Wow. Someone asked me to come speak there, and I used those. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So when, um, so when the person told you, you're going to use these one day, did, I mean, I saw from your expression, like, I am. So did, you, did something click in your head, like, maybe? Or did you know what was on them? Or? No, I really didn't. I mean, I must have held them up to the light and saw what they were, but I never thought that I would get a PhD in art history. I mean, my PhD is in interdisciplinary studies with a focus in art history, but my dissertation was on the presence of African symbols in Western art. Mm -hmm. But I never really thought that I was, that I would do that, but I was open to it. Mm -hmm. When I was in high school, I was a very free spirit, mm -hmm. and every day I would um, embody this a different culture for myself so one day I would be a Native American mm. another day I would be African then I would be African American you know I would dress the part mm -hmm. so they all knew me mm -hmm. um, then I would you know do the fashion thing so I never really I mean I didn't know what it was going to lead to mm -hmm. but I was open I've right. always been open mm -hmm. Wow that's great you know, because it's like everybody will have someone that come into your life um, and lead you to where you. Um, it, it brings me to at when I met um, Dr. Myra uh, Larry Brown, where he was telling a story. Uh, he'll be another guest on the show soon. Um, he mentioned that he, um, he kept having these dreams, and the dreams would say, <laughs> "Do beads." do beads mm -hmm. and you know at first he didn't pay attention to it and then after the third dream you know he got some rope so now he does like African beads and um, I know I should have wore his earrings yeah he's today. supposed to send me some but we'll get those one day mm -hmm. um, yeah so that was interesting it's like how the message comes to you and when you re if you receive it because if you're open, if you're open, yes, you know. Well, it, it goes back to when a student is ready, the teacher will appear. That's right. And so for and I like even me, I could meet someone, tell them, like, what my spirit says that they're gonna do or need to do, and they might not listen. 
you know, some people will, and they can just be on their journey sooner. Mm -hmm. So I'll just always be open to the whisper that comes from a stranger or anyone. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's cool. Oh yeah. So so then, so tell me, so when you come from another, you know, like so when you first came to New York. Mm -hmm. And you said, oh, so, you know, you had the poets and you heard the music. Was it, what is the feeling or like describe like your first um, oh, description I I of on. coming to New York? And is it because coming from another place, I know New York is such a different, um, and I'm asking this question because I'm from New York and when I went away. I went to California. Okay. And I and I, you know when you're young, you're like, like I couldn't tell what it was, but it was something missing. Mm -hmm. And it was like you can go to another place and you're like, oh, this is nice. Oh, they got palm trees. Oh, it's warm. But it's like a. I felt like lonely. Like mm -hmm. it and it was like weird. And I, I really couldn't figure out what it was. But now I can. So I think it's it's just the energy of New York that I don't think mm -hmm. another place has just because we have so many people and so many cultures mm -hmm. and the speed <laughs> that we oh, move my goodness. from. Yeah. And so when you come from another place and you, you kind of open to, you know, everything that mm -hmm. New York has to offer. So you, give me your description of what that is. So the first <laughs> time I came to New York, um, that I, what, I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. Um, and my aunt gave me a trip mm -hmm. to Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Her boyfriend lived here. And so that was my gift. Mm -hmm. So we came on the bus, I remember. And when we got here, he lived in Brooklyn. The family, his, he, he and his family lived in Brooklyn. And I was like so amazed, oh my goodness. And they took me downtown at the time the Wiz was mm -hmm. happening. Okay. Was that at Long Island University? No, the Wiz. Okay. No, the Wiz. Oh, the real one. The okay. Wiz. Okay. No, when you no, said no, the Wiz um, music store. Oh, remember the oh okay. Remember the Wiz music <laughs> store? <laughs> yeah, okay. And they yeah. used to play music, mm -hmm. and it was like everybody would be in there dancing and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And that year, I remember Brothers Johnson mm -hmm. had come out with their new album, and... Rasta Man Vibration by Bob Marley. Okay. And I remember buying both of those albums. Mm -hmm. That was like my thing. I, um, and I said, I have to get back here. People were sitting on stoops and it was just amazing. I mean, coming from Cambridge mm -hmm. to New York. And I knew I was going to get, get back here, but I didn't know how it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And when I had that opportunity to apply to Pratt Institute, um, you know, that's what happened. So... When I came here for good um, to go to Pratt, my, I, I didn't know anybody. I was a transfer student, but there was this one woman who became my best friend. She just passed away um, a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And um, she was sort of like me. Mm -hmm. I, well, I was the oldest child. I'm the, I'm the eldest in my family. And she was the youngest, I believe. But she was always independent and she was always daring and she always did. She also, you know, she was at Pratt and we lived on the same floor. And so that's how I, you know, started okay. just just getting acclimated to Brooklyn mm -hmm. through her. And, um, and then I just started experimenting, you know, by going out there to galleries and, you know, we had assignments and, mm -hmm. and those kinds of things. Um, you know, and it was really interesting just to watch the, the art students because, you know, an art school. Mm -hmm. so, when you, so when you went to, okay, gallery, so you went to Manhattan. I went to Manhattan. Mm -hmm. I went to Manhattan. I didn't know anything. I was having this conversation again with someone else. I didn't know anything about the black artist yeah. in Brooklyn. I, mm -hmm. That's not what I was taught. Even, um, you know, I mentioned that I teach art history now. You know, the only artist that came close to African culture for me that I remembered was Picasso. Mm. And that was about um, Cubism. And it wasn't until I started working on my dissertation because 
you know, everybody talked about his misappropriation of um, African um, um, uh, culture, masks, and sculpture. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until my um, doing the research on my dissertation did I find out that his mother was a Moor. Mm -hmm. And if his mother's a Moor, that made him African. And so, and, you know, and there was definitely a connection wow. mm -hmm. with, um, you know, him being acclimated towards these African um, images. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and he happens to be one of my favorite artists and at this point, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm actually, I don't mind saying it <laughs> out <laughs> well, loud. Yeah, well, that's weird. Well, my favorite artist is Anthony Armstrong. I don't, well, I, guess, I don't know. So anyway, oh, they okay. call him the black Picasso. Oh, okay. So. Interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to look him up. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, it's, it's amazing how many artists that we have. And... Mm -hmm. From like you said, when you came on the scene, it wasn't really like they wasn't. Rep I mean, it was around you. Every probably it everyone, was around me, and right? I, but I, I mean, because I was, I don't know if it had to do with me being a fashion student. I don't know if it was be. I've always been really um, shy or quiet or like so. I, I would deal. Although I did run the Black Student Union at one point. But, I mean, what was happening then was, um, while I was at Pratt, I was, um, there was definitely the Fulton Art Fair that was happening where people were hanging on the fence. Um, while I was there, I mean, Jacob Lawrence and Ernie Critchlow and um, so many others, like Vivian Schuyler Key, Otto Niels, um, a, a lot of these artists were in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. There were these, I mean, it, it was just, I mean, it right. was a huge art scene. The new muse was happening. Um, and then eventually, where we at black women artists, there was um, the way you see artists that was, that was happening. But, you know, you end up, I guess it's safe mm -hmm. for um, professors to teach about the Harlem Renaissance. And but right there in Brooklyn, if I had known that then, I mean, I always think about, like, would I have gotten, you know, a, a jump start on this? Or would this have, you know, would I have been able to do this a lot sooner? Um, but fortunately, I have, li I live around mm -hmm. a lot of these artists. Mm -hmm. I was just talking to Leroy Campbell this morning. He called me from, he's in Atlanta now, and, you know, we were just walking down memory lane in reference to when he, you know, when he lived here. And I remember when he got started and when he really blew up. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just, I mean, we were just having these, you know, this conversation. We were talking about, you know, Moshoud and mm -hmm. Brenda Brunson Bay and um, 4W Circle of mm -hmm. Art, mm -hmm. which people don't remember. Um, Selma Jackson, you met her. Mm -hmm. She came mm -hmm. to the book signing. I mean, there was just so much power mm -hmm. in this place, you know, in Brooklyn. Yeah. So you mentioned Mashoud. So um, Mashoud has moved out of the Brooklyn community onto um, restoration. Mm -hmm. and Which is still in Brooklyn. Well, yeah, in Brooklyn, but, but his, from his from here, 25 in this years area, on yeah. Fulton Street. I know. So that he's celebrating his 25th anniversary. Yeah, that's so powerful. So, Good um, for him. We, my, um, my CEO at the Brooklyn Plaza Medical Center, she'll be walking in his fashion show. So that should be interesting. Oh. So it's moving from, you know, where it used to be, like mm -hmm. an outdoor event. So now it'll be indoors. And, you know, for that neighborhood to get acquainted to, well, not that they don't know who he is, mm -hmm. but just, you know, they'll be able to walk to him. And we sure. won't. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So. But you'll be able to get there. Mm hmm Yeah. So that's interesting. So it's, um, it's all about the art. And I guess for, like, my show, um, I, I try to present people that, like, you know, I see. Just like you saw these people, and these were your friends, and you were walking down the street, and, you know, you just knew people that were artists, but they mm -hmm. wasn't great yet. So 
you know, usually my show is um, people I see. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, you know, I have them on the show, but these are the people that will be the legends of the future. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I use my vision and I say, oh, and then I kind of follow them. And they're doing like amazing things. So I'm always so happy that, you know, anyone that was on the show, that if you can follow and see the things that they're doing mm -hmm. in a short period of time. So, you know, I have my little, my predictions. Like I was like, oh, 20 years, this one will be like this. Mm -hmm. Then I'll take it down to 10. <laughs> <laughs> so that's great. So you have, um, and then you had, the, so you're all into the art and then you, um, you did how many books so far? Well, I'm in a lot of them. <laughs> um, I'm a quilter, mm -hmm. um, and I'm in a lot of quilt books. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I wrote a book called um, um, Peace Symbols, which mm -hmm. is, it's a mixture of history, and it's old. It's out of print now. I think the company, publishing company, went out of business. Barnes & Nobles bought the company, mm -hmm. and anyway, mm -hmm. But I did that book, and that was on, it was on a technique called mm -hmm. foundation piecing. But I did some history, mm -hmm. and I, I put a call out around mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. to ask artists if they were interested in making a quilt using my pattern. Mm -hmm. And I got someone as far as, I think, Israel. Um, so that was like a nice little history book. So I did that, and then once I did that, this, um, there's a, a coffee table book that came out called Quilts Around the World. Mm -hmm. And they knew that I had done this particular book and they asked me if I would design 20 quilt block patterns um, based on 20 of the cultures in the book, quilt mm -hmm. cultures in the book. So I did that. And then um, I've been a, a member of um, Women of Color Quilters Network, mm -hmm. which is founded by Dr. Carolyn Mazalumi out of Ohio. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm in a number of her books. As a matter of fact, I'm in a show, a quilt show in, that's right now, that's been traveling around the country, but it's in um, Martha's Vineyard. Okay. Um, at the Mariposa um, Museum and um, called In Still We Rise. So that's a really, that's been a really wonderful show and she does a lot of catalogs with her, you know, it would, which look like books. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so that's what I, did I answer the question? <laughs> I think I did. Yeah. But no, yeah. Was telling us about the other thing, the other books that you Yeah. Read. Oh, you asked me about mm -hmm. the books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then this one, um, I wanted to do, as a matter of fact, right now, which I have not announced it to the public at all. It's been, like, been super, super quiet, but I am working on a new series of um, of books um, for of artists, mm -hmm. black artists around the country. It's going to mm -hmm. spread out throughout mm -hmm. the country. So I'm working on the East Coast right now. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been really interesting. And because of that, this I've met so many wonderful, wonderful people. Um, and then this has been the. This really wasn't supposed to come first. Mm -hmm. Um, I was going to do a documentary on Brooklyn. That's mm -hmm. what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have the finances, of course, to do it. Um, you know, I could have piecemealed it, but um, I just said, let me just go ahead and, and do the book and then let the documentary come afterwards. So I'm working on the documentary now. It's still... You know, I, it's not really titled, mm -hmm. but to yeah, have, um, it, but it's mm -hmm. Brooklyn on my mind, the documentary so far, and um, and I'm really excited about that. The organization that I co-founded called Genesis East and West, um, the, which is founded in theater and film, mm -hmm. um, which I never thought that I would be founded it. You know, mm -hmm. found anything in theater and film, but. It's just been so amazing, the whole, the whole process. Um, they're actually doing the documentary. So I have a co-producer and a co-director, and I've been interviewing. Um, I had the opportunity to go down to Philadelphia and inter interview the curator of 
um, the John Roden collection, which is a young black woman. Um, and it was amazing, um, for lack of a better word, because the John, Ro John Roden was a, an artist that lived in Brooklyn with his wife, right downtown. He's a, he was a sculptor and he, I mean, he won so many awards. Mm -hmm. um, they, their, his, his collection, when he passed away, I think last year or year before last, his collection went to the Philadelphia Academy of Fine Arts. Okay. And so she's the, she's the curator of his collection. The, his collection will be on view in 2021, but she took me in the back mm -hmm. to see it. And she said, do what you gotta do. And I, so that's gonna be in my documentary, which is really his whole, like just going in the back and seeing everything laid out. And it was just amazing, amazing. Um, to see that. And Danny Simmons, um, you know, we were able to go and videotape his collection and he has a massive collection. Otto Neal's another person. Mm -hmm. I curated an exhibition of his work a couple of years ago. I did a, a retrospective. Um, 284 pieces wow. and um, because of my interdisciplinary background <laughs> I didn't want to just do a show where um, he, his work would hang on the wall at one gallery mm -hmm. so he's a master of six different mediums mm -hmm. and I had this idea to create this quilt of his work per wow. se so I got six galleries to buy into showing a medium mm -hmm. in each gallery. And what I did was I, in my mind, I pretended like I was piecing a quilt. And so one gallery would open, then the next gallery would open, and then they would just keep opening until all six were open wow. uh, simultaneously. Uh, so that was really phenomenal. And I think that's wh when really things, people started to know what I was doing. Um, and then I got a call to do the, um, to manage him for this project where Newark mm -hmm. um, went into this community that was under privileged, I don't like to use certain mm -hmm. terms, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. well, and, they chose 14 artists to create this public art installation. And so I managed him for that, and then I ended up managing two of the other artists. And then from there, <laughs> I went to Jamal Shabazz. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with his photography, but yes. um, he's actually, um, I project managed his, the project that he did with Epics mm -hmm. recently that's coming out. He did all the uh, marketing images for it, so you'll start. To, you'll see billboards of *The Godfather of Harlem*, which mm -hmm. is a new TV series that will okay. be coming out on Epics in the fall. So that's what I've been doing. Oh. Yeah. So. So when's the vacation? <laughs> um. Well, I, I'm. It's getting there. Mm -hmm. I do travel. Mm -hmm. I've. You know, I was going to Cuba pretty regularly and taking groups to Cuba. At um, up until. Mm -hmm. things got a little different and um, my husband and I actually found our first cousins. Wow, in Cuba? Yes, oh, wow. so that was like amazing. It was like a movie, mm -hmm. so maybe it will be. Um, but, and then I I was doing a, there's an organization. Wait, wait, so were you looking for your cousin? Or did you just go there and find out? I was, tra I was taking groups there and my husband, um, he, I, I went, I was going without him to mm -hmm. Cuba because I was taking groups mm -hmm. and I knew before his mother um, transitioned, she used to always talk about his first cousins. Mm -hmm. um, her brother was a, uh, um, he worked for the sugar company and he met mm -hmm. a woman there and married her and they had okay. three children. And, and so stayed. we knew that they were there, but we didn't, he never, we didn't know where, right. but she had the address and everything. Wow. And I talked him into going with me the next time I went and one of my friends took him to this place and that's how we found them. It was just, <laughs> it was like out of, a, it was like a movie actually. 
Well, you said it will be. So. Yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. I can imagine. Yeah. That's cool. So, so those are the things, you know, those are some of the things that I do. But it's all related, you know. Mm -hmm. So it does, it seems like right. a lot. Um, and, you know, and I do, you know, if people can do what they love. I was, um, am I talking too much? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a talk show. <laughs> ah, I, I was talking to someone. One of my friends had, um, she just started um, graduate school, mm -hmm. and she had to go to her colloquium in Vermont or someplace, and she was complaining that they sent her this, um, this essay that she had to read, and she says, I don't know why they didn't send it sooner. Um, and I said, well, what is it called? And she said, Decolonizing Archives. And this light bulb went off in my head because I was trying to figure out, like, what is it that I'm really supposed, supposed to be to, doing mm -hmm. and how can I monetize the, what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. and, um, and I thought about it and I said, you know, this is it. Like, so right now I'm archiving. Like, this is an archive. Um, there was, like, so many artists in the book who I had to, like, search high and low to get information mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. Thank God I knew some of the artists who had collected their work when they were alive. Mm -hmm. um, but now I'm like on this mission for artists to tell their own stories, mm -hmm. whether they're poets or musicians or fashion, whatever, photographers right. or whatever. I think it's so important for us to tell our exactly. own stories. You know, it's nice to hear someone critique right. the work or to write about it. Right. But I want to hear the artist's statement. Exactly. You know, not what the, you know, mm -hmm. what someone else is right. saying. And that's important. So, you know, as a, as a person in your position, that's what you're here to do. And we thank you for doing that because I know um, Sonia Sanchez, they mm -hmm. have um, a, um, the black um, movement, like a, the book is like, uh, what do you call it? A telephone book size, but it's from the perspective of people that lived in the era, mm -hmm. from their story. So when students study, they can know what was going on um, mm -hmm. in the '60s with the movement f from a personal perspective. Right. And that's like an artist. That's what you're doing, and other people that are here. And um, I know several people that are um, collecting information and putting it together. And it's important because you, you, if you think about it, like you have, it makes me think of, um, I had a, a friend who's also an educator and he was a producer like back in the 80s. And he started, um, it was called VidCap. Mm. So that was when videos first came out. Right. So, well, his vision was like when you did film, you know, you would have, um, or plays, they would document, and, you know, other people that were going to do the same production, mm -hmm. it would be a resource mm -hmm. where people could um, take it out. So it was for, uh, VidCap was videos and production, um, can't even remember what it's all, but it lasted, it's still going on, and he writes also. Nice. But, you know, he moved to Long Island, so I don't think he's really in active in the producing and directing because that's what he was doing in the 80s so and like when I think of that experience and um, putting on starting used to be a, um, a festival in um, Prospect Park a Caribbean festival oh I think I remember right that. and so we had kind of started that oh, so wow. that went on until I guess like 2000 but it started in um, 1983, I believe. Wow. So, so what you're doing now, now, 20 years from now, we don't know how art will be presented. Um, mm -hmm. We'll still have books. It may be some other form, but mm -hmm. it's just a part of, you know, you're here to document in the form that you're living. And we thank you for that because it's thank important. You. And a lot of work goes into finding people, capturing the story, because everyone here has a story. And to hear it, like, um, like I was telling you about the film the other night, mm -hmm. and I guess when I watch film, and it's like clips of the person's life, 
and why they did the work that they did. And so this was John Coltrane's um, documentary. Mm -hmm. And so the parts that was him talking, and of course at that time it was like, you know, his music, um, people didn't understand because he was ahead of his time. Mm -hmm. So, but now, but you never um, heard, uh, like for me, I mean, you hear his name like almost every day and, you know, but I didn't really fully understand like the gift of the person. Right. And to hear it from him, it, it was like, it's an experience. So as much documentation that we can get on anybody's so life. So important. It's phenomenal. So like I said, that's a serious thing. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I have the book. That's a new project for me. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful book. Um, the artwork is like just breathtaking. Um, it's, you know, you have books, table books, you know, but this book is like, you want to look at it, you want to meet this person. And what, you know, what made them do this, you know, what, because it's all um, different types of art in the book. So, mm -hmm. and so it's a, it's a beautiful Thank book. Thank you. Thank you and so much. And like I said, it's, I pass it and I was like, I noticed it was, <laughs> it was that green light. And I didn't see it in the, because um, I'm always telling, oh, it's this book, you got to see it. You you know, because I live in the neighborhood, so I'm always telling people and um, that they have to, oh, it's right in the window, you know, check it out. Oh, thank so, you. Yeah. I appreciate that. So, um, yeah. So you have, and then you live in Brooklyn, and then you have, um, I don't remember her name, but it's a museum in Brooklyn. Uh, what's the the name of our organization? No, the it's another lady that has a museum in Brooklyn. The oh, Vira. Yes. Is that her name? Yes. I think that's her name. She's not. I I met her. Oh, okay. okay. I met her. You know, I it's so interesting. Just like I met you mm -hmm. at the museum. Mm -hmm. We just <laughs> right ended up yeah. saying hi. Yeah. And that in was, Manhattan. That was when you were doing the um um the quilting. Yeah, I think you had so. your exhibit for that. Oh right, yeah, yeah. yeah Carrie that's what, James, the Carrie, uh, yeah, the yeah. Carrie James exhibition. Yeah, where and, it was packed. Yeah, and it was like the last one of the last days. Yeah, I think it was. And it wasn't. You know, yeah, I was with my hu my husband, yeah. and I said Let, we have to go see this before it closes. Yeah. And I just happened to s you were waiting yeah, for your friend, yeah. and we were, mm -hmm. and I, yeah, a poet, a artist, a historian, and a <laughs> look well. Right. You know, and mm -hmm. you meet at some place one day. And so then I remind you, I said, I've met you before. And I was telling you where I met you. And, you know, it's like people meet for a reason. That's it. And it, it's, it's, you know, like people say, oh, that's so funny. But it's really, you know, there are no co coincidences. So it's like it's true. when you think about how people met or you never know the significance of who, you know, one day, because I have a book, and I just write down, like, people tell me stuff. Now, usually I don't listen, but you figure if somebody you don't know tells you something, I take the time and I just write it down. I try to remember to follow up on it mm -hmm. or to do, um, maybe it's something they said. It could have been one line. Mm -hmm. um, it may be my motto for that year for my life. That's right. <laughs> so... And, and, you know, so I just, that's just my thing. Yeah, so. I mean, that's how that, that um, the decolonizing archives, and I'm trying to remember the, the guy who wrote it, it Igor, some, somebody, mm -hmm. I, and I started reading it, and it was kind of heady, but what really captured my, you know, self was mm -hmm. the, the whole decolonizing archives, which is how many times do we believe the story that's attached to um, an artist or a piece of work mm -hmm. or, um, you know, that, and we don't hear from the artists. Like, there's so many of them I, I wished they were interviewed. Mm -hmm. And that's what Genesis East and West is about, mm -hmm. um, you know, and we're trying to get, you know, and it's so funny because when I, when I recruit people to become members of the organization um, and, you know, when I talk about how we want to archive you, 
a lot of times artists don't understand how important that is for them to really tell their own story. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether you're a poet right. like yourself or a, um, a producer or a musician or, you know, my husband and I and the, my, the, um, the, my um, business partner for the organization, we were talking about Night of the Cookers. Mm -hmm. And um, that took place with, um, oh goodness, I'm trying to remember the name of the musician. But there were a number of musicians who used to um, have these different jam sessions, mm -hmm. jazz mm -hmm. jam sessions in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And um, and they did it, and they created this huge album called Night of the Cookers. Mm -hmm. And it took, and it was taped at this club on Nostrand and President Street okay. in Brooklyn called La Michelle's. Oh, okay. And um, we were talking about that and we were talking about certain things and how many, like, was there any verbal some, something? Mm -hmm. You know, like, what were they thinking? You know, we make up these stories we know um, or when, um, you know, the artists wrote, write a certain uh, song, mm -hmm. like what are they thinking? Like why did they write it? Did, did, did somebody <laughs> was it personal? Yeah, was it personal or whatever? But we make these stories up mm -hmm. in our heads, mm -hmm. and it's really not their story. Right. So this is what my archiving is about, and this is why I, you know, try to just get folks uh, come and join, mm -hmm. so that people can hear your stories. Mm -hmm. We want you to tell your story, you know. So. Well, <laughs> well, I'll help you get some people. Good. <laughs> yeah. This is like so the artist corner. Yeah. Um, you know, we arts and culture. So from um, jazz artists, curators. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I think I've had a, a little bit of everyone. Um, cardists, people that do cards. Um, wow. Um, and so Art Stewart, wonderful artist. Um, some up and coming artists, Jeffrey um, Clemente. Um, it, it goes on and on. So mm -hmm. definitely yeah. know a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. And it, I guess it's like being a creative, even though I don't think I would have considered. When you're not a musician and you don't, I've always been in the arts. And it, it's almost like not even, I don't play any instruments, but I know music. Mm -hmm. And so when you're around so much creativity, it's, it's just a part of you, you know, even though you don't play an instrument. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I guess that, um, and then everything is related. You go from one thing and you grow and, oh, I used to be this. And that led to the next thing. So where would you think, well, if you had to guess, is there a place that you would eventually want to end up saying, oh, well, now I'm a, or you just will follow the path and end up wherever it's going to take you. What, I, what I'm going to do? Mm -hmm. Like after you have the collective, you have the book, mm -hmm. um, the documentaries will be done on everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so is there a place, um, I'm just saying as an artist, um, man that you mentioned mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. before we were just talking and you were talking about being in retail mm -hmm. and like when you're retail and fashion, you know, that's a part of life at that period of time. Mm -hmm. And then there comes another time period. So I'm just saying from your perspective, when you take all your experiences mm -hmm. as a, as a, a parent, uh, a wife, um, and as an artist, is there a place that you can envision right now and mm -hmm. say, that's what I want to be? Or do you just take the journey and you'll end up there and it's sort of like an unknown thing? Um, I, it's so, <laughs> it, no, it's really fascinating that you ask me that because I have been really thinking about that. You know, and sometimes when you get to be a certain age, you have this thing where, am I too old right. or whatever? But I'm realizing that I, I've always been a connector mm -hmm. of people. Mm -hmm. Like I've always, um, I've always looked at and really studied what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to communicate to you what it is that I really think that mm -hmm. you would be better at mm -hmm. or you would right. be 
good at, and I didn't realize that that was the gift. <laughs> right. So I find, I, like some people, I, I was watching this documentary and I used to always call myself a kingmaker mm -hmm. when I dealt with my husband because I we have a youth program, um, a, a multi-service program that has run, this is our 41st anniversary mm -hmm. of it and um, in Crown Heights. And I people, a lot of times, you know, unless you were with me from the earlier days when we were actually running the, the, the day camp and those sorts of things, a lot of people would never see me or know mm -hmm. me. They would more so see my husband mm -hmm. because he would be out in the forefront, which, mm -hmm. was, fine for, which was fine mm -hmm. for me. Um, so I used to always tease mm -hmm. folks and say, oh, I'm a kingmaker. Mm -hmm. And I was watching this documentary <laughs> and they called the guy a kingmaker. And I'm like, wow, because he connects. Mm -hmm. And that's what I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. So even in project managing um, artists, no matter what kind of artists, like, so most of the project managing that I do, it comes if, like, say you get a project, mm -hmm. I would be the, I'm the one that will negotiate the contract mm -hmm. for you. Because mm -hmm. I believe that artists should be an artist, like do stay in your lane, mm -hmm. do what you um, are really great at, <laughs> and don't, and so you don't have to worry about the whole business aspect mm -hmm. of it. Even though you should know the business right. aspect mm -hmm. of it, but let someone else right. do that. the negotiating for you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been good at, mm -hmm. like looking out. Um, for those artists that I've worked mm -hmm. with. Like, I'm so proud of the Epics project. When folks see the billboards and they see the, um, the work that Jamel was mm -hmm. able to do, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's gonna blow you away. Um, you know, just even co-producing the documentary mm -hmm. and just being able, like, thinking about different projects that um, are going to come from that based on meeting, like even meeting right. you mm -hmm. and you now being a Genesis mm -hmm. member. Um, am I allowed yeah. to say that? Yeah. <laughs> and just being so excited to bring you into the family. Mm -hmm. um, I can imagine what I, I mean, I already, the clock, <laughs> or the, my brain is mm -hmm. already moving as mm -hmm. to how you're, I'm going to, you know, we're going to offer you to be involved. And, um, you know, I have a friend who does these C train chronicles okay. every day. She, <laughs> she takes the C train okay. from, from East New York mm -hmm. every, every morning to go to work. Mm -hmm. And she writes the, on her phone, she writes okay. these, these C train, what she calls C train, her little, little blurb. Cool. Wow. And she's not a, she wasn't a, she's really didn't consider herself a writer per se, but she just enjoyed observing the people on mm -hmm. the train. Right. And it clicked. And I mm -hmm. said, my goodness, would you be interested in doing a book or would you be, in, you know, or something when I showed it to my, um, to Lawrence, the co-producer, he said, we can do, he called, I think he said, we can do a 360 with this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. Like I'm learning, I'm learning the language. <laughs> um, and so it's possibly going to be something. I mean, it's going to be something. Right. But, you know, those kinds of things mm -hmm. we're working on. You know, I want to produce. Mm -hmm. That's what I, that's right. what I you feel. In your mind, you come up with ideas mm -hmm. that maybe other people don't come up with. They're just doing their yeah. art. And then you're the person that puts everything together. And plus the financial and the logistics of mm -hmm. how t how to support their art, which right. is not something that everyone right. has the skill in. Um, some people don't know the value of their work. Mm -hmm. And I guess as an artist, that's a part of what happens, especially in our community. It's like um, people, you know, at this period of time, whoever's an artist right now, and, you know, you had the whole starving artist thing that needs to just go away. Yes. But, Thank you. <laughs> and then you have artists. Like, I know artists. They make things. And it's beautiful. Nobody else is going to make what they made. 
and no one, and maybe they see the value and they want to hold on to it. They, you know, I talk to people and I'm like, well, you want to do this? And they're like, no, I just want to, like, you just want to be an artist to yourself. So you have those artists too yes. that mm -hmm. create and they don't want to let go. Um, then you, you know, so it's just a spectrum. But the point is, um, that's what makes the world beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to embrace everybody's art um, and to be able to have it passed on in their words. Um, and you, you know, when everybody looks at the work, of course, that's the gift of why it's art. Everyone's going to see something different. But to have it documented of what it meant to them. Oh, sure. And I think it should be that. I mean, I think there's an artist in there in particular I can remember who has children that mm -hmm. are still living. He's mm -hmm. an ancestor now. And they don't have a lot of their father's work. I don't even know if they have any per se. Mm -hmm. And so for them to see it in the book mm -hmm. was a big deal. I mean, for my friend to have it and mm -hmm. to buy it from him many years ago and I was able to go and photograph it, that, that was important. Mm -hmm. So his legacy, I mean, there's an African proverb, which I'm paraphrasing, that says, um, every time I call your name, or I, I'll continue to call your name so that you will never die. Wow. And so, and that's what that's about. Mm -hmm. Like, the legacy lives on and on and on. I'm hoping that a young person will take that book and they'll have access to the information about the artist and they'll do something else with it. Mm -hmm. Like that's what it's about. It's about not it's not about me holding on to mm -hmm. it. I, I think that this um, this country is one of the only countries that really doesn't support the artist mm -hmm. in a way that, you know, if there's a phenomenal artist we should be fed. Mm -hmm. Like we shouldn't have to worry about paying the rent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or paying or, ha or having a having a job, a daytime mm -hmm. job, so that you can buy supplies to do your art. Right. It shouldn't happen like that. Or, or their value is not valued until they passed away. Right. And then you're great. Um, you know, if you think about all the hip art, hip art, hip, you know, artists that. The graffiti artists that became mm -hmm. great afterwards and mm -hmm. just all, I mean, what was considered like, um, you know, what's the word we used to use? Vandalism. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. now, if you, um, we have a wall that's on Fulton Street on the side of our center. I don't, I'm not familiar with the artists, but we wanted to show movies. So they were saying, oh, we're going to paint over this and you know, just make it a white wall. So I was like, well, who's the artist? Because I said, now they just, you know, before they cover it up, they kind of want to save the wall mm -hmm. because they know in the future it's going to have like value. Like Basquiat, who so lived I'm in like, different well, places. You know, so I took pictures. I'm not sure who the artist, I think it's a Japanese artist that just came one day and said, mm -hmm. oh, can I paint this mural? But that's what I mean. It's like you don't know who this artist is. That's right. And you may just look at it and say, oh, you know, yeah, we're going to use this for movies. Mm -hmm. And then 10 years later, this is the most famous person in the world, and you just covered up their art. So at least do the work to find out. And, you know, so this is a part of that story. Mm -hmm. People can go to a book. Oh, and yeah. find out who mm -hmm. this person is. Oh yeah, and I want. And one of the other things that I want to do, and I'm working on. I'm talking to one of the libraries here in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I want to create an archive at the library, mm -hmm. um, so that we'll have the artists in in a, a public archive. So we're starting at with Genesis East and West, mm -hmm. and we're doing what needs to be done um, to at least get an archive going mm -hmm. um, there and then hopefully we can partner with a library mm -hmm. where we can create it you know make it a lot bigger there's a um, there's an there's a huge archive called the matrix um, that comes out of I think Michigan State University and I went to visit them I had to speak there um, a couple of years ago and I went to visit them and uh, because I was at City College at the time. And City College was one of the um, sites for 
um, the WPA project. Mm -hmm. And so they have some work there and they have a lot of really good art. And there's a lot of art in Harlem on the, outs, on, on the out, um, outdoors. And I said, wow, it would be really wonderful to have like a massive mm -hmm. um, archive of the culture. So, yeah. Yeah. I can see it. And even like you said, I remember being um, in high school and I did an internship at the Metropolitan Museum. Oh, wow. In the fashion institute, um, the, in the costume institute. Oh, nice. So it was like, here I am, 10th grade. Um, so I would go there. I had access to all the, just to float around the museum and what, see anything I wanted. And, you know, so when it came to, um, I guess what we were supposed to be doing was sewing. Like when they would have the exhibits, they would have this restorate um, some of the fabric. So we would buy fabric and sew some of those costumes. And, you know, I would sit there, I remember just like all the Vogue magazines from the beginning and all the bizarre magazines and they just had everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just to be able to reflect back now on, I could just go and have access to stuff like that and that it was there. And I always think like now, wow. Now, I wish that I could get invited to, <laughs> to go to the Costume Institute for the big Met Gala, you know. I but know. I'm just saying like, when you're 20 years like before, and it's like, it, was, it hadn't become as fully, you know, as large as it is now, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, it's just interesting how life is. Yeah, I and, and the longer you, you live, it's so many, you, you just have more stories. Because you mentioned about being, you know, uh, you mentioned something about, oh, you know, being too old to do. I don't know if it's being too old to do so, because you're never too old to do anything right. as long as you have breath. So, um yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly been a journey, and I'm sure it'll continue to be a journey. Oh, yes. And, I, and you're going to be at that Met Gala. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. We're going to claim it right now. Okay. We're claiming it. We're claiming it. And um, so it's certainly been a pleasure having this discussion with Ms. Dr. Brown, um, Myra Brown-Green, and I thank you so much for your time and your dedication and your work. And I want everyone to support artists and go out there. And if you're artists, do your thing. Let us know about what you're doing. I'm Catriona Yvonne, and this is the Catriona Yvonne Show. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next, next week. Bye. Thank you. Stand up. I hope my head up high. Stand up. And I walk with pride. Stand up. I just stand. I just stand up, stand up, I walk with pride, stand up, hold my head up high, yeah, I just stand up. Greetings, my name is Dr. Myra Brown Green, author of Brooklyn on My Mind. I look forward to you seeing me on the Ketriana Yvonne show. I am so excited.